Hi, I'm Wim Bogaert from Ghent University and iMac, and I will tell you about programmable photonics. Now, if we think about programmable, we usually think about stuff that can be defined in software. And that makes it flexible, makes it also upgradable and multifunction. And we've seen that in plenty of examples in the past decades. We have seen everyday things become smart. For instance, the phone has become a smartphone. A TV has become a smart TV. A house has become a smart home with lots of flexible configurations of lighting and signals and stuff like that. And cars have become smart as well, even to the point that they can be upgraded over the air in software. Now, if we take that to programmable photonics, we have on one hand manipulation of functionality in software that can make things smart, and on the other hand, the photonics where we manipulate light on a small scale. So programmable photonics, essentially, you can boil down to manipulating light in software on a small scale. Now, why would you want to do that in the first place? Well, light contains information, and this is always useful. We can put information in the shape of light and how, how it's uh, uh, the intensity of beams, the profile of beams, the wavelength, etc. And to manipulate beams of light, we usually resort to discrete elements like lenses, mirrors, filters, etc. And some of these discrete elements can even be programmable. For instance, you have a spatial light modulator, like in a digital projector. But still, if you want to scale up the control of these elements, even in software, you need a really massive installation. And this doesn't scale very well. So the trick here is to bring everything to the surface of a chip, just like you do in electronics. Now, when you bring a lot of functionality to the surface of a chip, you gain a lot of things in terms of complexity, but in power consumption, cost, etc. And we've seen the same thing with electronics. So if we look now at photonic integrated circuits, this is a technology that has been under development and for the past three to four decades already. And we see that we get a kind of Moore's law for photonic integrated circuits. We see a doubling of the number of components on a chip, like every 12 to 18 months. Now there's one thing to keep in mind when you look at a graph like that, is to consider what type of circuits these are. All of these photonic circuits that I show here are application-specific circuits. They're designed for one particular purpose. Now, that, what that means, I can show best with an example. Say, for instance, that you want to design an optical transmitter or receiver, a transceiver for a data center. This is a very typical application for photonic chips. You essentially want to send signals from one side of a data center to another. So to design such a chip, you have to first choose your protocol, and then design the chip layout, fabricate it, package it, and test it. Now, for instance, if you pick a protocol consisting of four single-mode fibers, you would organize four uh, electro-optic modulators on the chip and four detectors on the chip and connect them to the fiber ports. However, if you want to change the protocol or upgrade the link to, for instance, what they call a coherent communication, you need to redesign a chip. You essentially have to take the same type of modulators and the same type of detectors, all the same building blocks, but you have to reconnect them together on a chip in a different way. And if you want to switch protocol again, for instance, to wavelength division multiplexing, again, you're using the same four modulators, the same four detectors, but now in a different circus, circuit where uh, you uh, have to integrate wavelength multiplexers and demultiplexers. So that's not very convenient if you want to play with new ideas in your data set. Because every time you have to design, fabricate, package and test a chip, which can easily take you a year and cost you like half a million. Now in electronics, people approach this very differently. In electronics, if you want to prototype a new function, you essentially buy an off-the-shelf microcontroller and then you program and test the chip and you can probably, within a couple of weeks, already have a prototype to give to your customer and see whether your idea is sound. So, these FPGAs, essentially, or field programmable gate arrays, essentially consist of programmable logic blocks which you can just connect in software. So, where is the photonic equivalent of, a fo of an FPGA, of a field programmable gate array? Where are photonic integrated circuits that can be reconfigured in software 
to perform different functions. And all of these elements are important. Such a chip would look a bit like this. You have optical signals going in and out, but you also have high frequency electronic signals going in and out because these can help you, uh, or these can be useful for many applications. And such a chip would look in more detail, would look a bit like this. You have your optical inputs and outputs at the top, but and your electrical signals, the moment they arrive on the chip, are converted into an optical signal by a high-speed modulator. And only after they've been processed in the optical domain, they are converted again to electronic signals. Now, the internals of the chip consists of this kind of mesh. In this case, it's a, we draw a hexagonal mesh with tunable couplers and phase shifters. This actually requires only two types of components. They need to be really good, but you need only a component that couples two waveguides together and where you can tune the amount of coupling, and a component that introduces a phase delay. And with all of these, you can essentially couple all the inputs to all the outputs in any way you like. Now, the first demonstration of such a circuit was already done in 2016-17 by the group of Jose Capmani at the Tech Polytechnical University of Valencia. Now, already with the seven, the seven hexagonal cells, you could do more than 100 functions. You could route light just by guiding it and changing the couplers uh, to, from a cross to a bar state. And you can do that not just with a single route, but with multiple routes. And you can even share couplers between routes. You can send light along a parallel path. Or you can use these couplers to cross two waveguides or two paths of light, which is typically difficult to do in a photonic circuit. You can also operate these couplers in a partial state, so you can split light, you can do power distribution, and you can use the same function to combine them together. And because light is a wave, you now have an interferometer. And this allows you to do, for instance, wavelength-dependent filters. Now, this, for instance, is a Maxander interferometer, or you can loop your light around in a ring, which can give you these sharp wavelength dependent ring resonator filters. Now this functionality allows you to design a chip in a completely new way. You don't have to design the geometry anymore. You don't even have to design the circuit by, by putting together standard building blocks on a chip. No, you already have a chip which you can now program by just changing the states of the different elements on the chip. Now, this chip is only a part of the whole stack. If you want to make something programmable, you need the electronics and the software layers on top of that. So you don't just have a photonic chip. You have a photonic chip with analog electronics, digital electronics for the control, and a software layer that can actually uh, give you the interface to the user. Now, the, the physical part of this is essentially a package where you have to bring together your photonic chip, your electronic control chips, uh, your fiber connections and your high-speed electronic connections and everything has to be sufficiently stabilized and packaged together in a, a good way. On top of that you need, as I said, these software layers. You need things that keep your all your couplers in the correct state and in the end you need also a tool set, a software layer that can help users get started pretty easily. Now this brings us to something that we could call a photonic FPGA, a general purpose chip where we can define connectivity and software with standardized interfaces. And this could actually open up photonics to a much wider community, just like programmable electronics has given a lot more people access to electronics. Now, if we go back to our example, we can easily program our uh, parallel single mode fiber transceiver in such a programmable photonic chip by just connecting the fiber ports to the modulators and the detectors. But we can just as well reorganize the connections here to make a coherent communications modulator, for instance, for a QAM16 coherent format. And we can even use this mesh to implement wavelength multiplexers and demultiplexers with using these filters to do a wavelength division multiplexing link. And it doesn't stop with transceivers. You can also use these, for instance, to implement the switch matrix, where you link all these ports one by one together. Or, for instance, using a beamforming network, where you can use this for LiDAR to scan a laser beam in free space. Or even process it, uh, use it as a microwave processor, so where the, the signals that come in are not optical but electrical. So high-speed signals come in, high-speed signals go out, but all the processing internally 
is done in the optical domain. Now, does this give us one chip that can essentially do everything? Well, in theory, yes. Uh, it, it can do things in RF and optical domain, and it's flexible to program. But it has the same limitations as you typically find in programmable electronics. Usually, these larger chips can be more expensive, especially if you want to make them in high volumes. The many elements will have higher loss, and it will also have higher power consumption. So, in the end, it will always be a choice. Just like in electronics, you will have to, cho to choose between a generic programmable chip or an application-specific chip. So, if I have to say one thing, then it's definitely that programmable photonic circuits, which are now in their infancy, could really make photonics smart. In the sense that they become more flexible, multifunctional, reconfigurable, etc. It can be a game changer, just like programmable electronics was, because it could allow you to do really rapid prototyping for a variety of applications, and it could open up photonics to a much wider community.